fought in Germany. I'd like to introduce our participants in this media event today. With me is Major General Dwayne Gamble, the commander of the 21st TSC. We also have Rear Admiral Christian Jaworski from the Polish Third Ship Flotilla on behalf of the Poland General, uh, Military Department. Also, Colonel Michelle Letcher and Command Sergeant Major Frank Graham from the 16th Sustainment Brigade. Cameron Thorpe, the CO of the Port of Gdansk here. And Lieutenant Colonel Coleman Johnson, the 497th Combat Sustainment Support Brigade or Battalion. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Thorpe to make some opening statement and comments, and then General Gamble, and then I will open the floor to your questions. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to DCT Gdansk, which is the largest container terminal in the Baltic and the fastest growing. Um, we were very happy here to assist with this project for Atlantic Resolve. Um, and we are very happy to be uh, playing a part and a role in the logistics for that event. I'd like to hand over now to uh, Major General Gamble uh, for his comments uh, and be available for any comments later on. Thank you. Good morning and thanks for being here with us today. My name is uh, Major General Dwayne Gamble. I'm the Commanding General of the 21st Theater Sustainment Command. I'm stationed in Kaiserslautern, Germany as part of U.S. Army Europe. Today is the day three of our reception staging onward movement of a logistics task force that's deployed from the United States to support our Armor Brigade combat team that we brought into Poland in January. Also, it will support our Combat Aviation Brigade that deployed to Europe in February. And so this is the third deployment in the last 90 days all aimed at building readiness, uh, improving our interoperability with our NATO allies, training alongside our NATO allies, and deterring uh, aggression against the NATO alliance. This task force is comprised of each of our components in our Army, our active Army forces, our Army National Guard forces, and our Army Reserve forces. It's comprised of approximately 900 soldiers, a little over 300 uh, major items of equipment like vehicles, uh, fuel tankers, and cargo vehicles. Uh, they, they, they're going to deploy for a nine-month rotation. They'll predominantly be stationed in Poditz, Poland, about in military terms, about the eight-hour drive south of here. Of course, if you drove it in your car, it would be a little shorter. They'll be deploying from here in convoys across the Polish countryside. They'll be escorted uh, by Polish uh, escorts as they move down to Poditz, Poland, where they will assemble and begin their support to uh, forces, American forces operating in Poland and uh, other Eastern NATO countries. Uh, with that, we'll, we'll open it up to any questions you may have. But once again, thank you. And then forgive me, but one, one last thing. None of this would be, uh, a, a, we, the United States would be able to do none of this without the support of our allies. And in this case, our great host country of Poland. Uh, the Polish uh, military has been exquisite partners for the last three years as we all build readiness and improve our interoper interoperability across the alliance. And the Port of Gdansk and the people of Gdansk have, have been wonderful hosts. Uh, to this operation as well. So thank you for your attention and thanks for being with us today. First questions? Um, I'm sorry, I forgot your rank. Colonel Lloyd. Major General Gamble. Major General, I'm very sorry. Um, Major General uh, Gamble. Um, um, yeah, my name is Denise Reeves and I work for the news agency called Rockley from Berlin and Germany. Um, my question is, this is a uh, new NATO deployment towards the eastern countries. Um, how much of a threat is Russia in, in reality to, to, to the uh, European Union or to the NATO alliance? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, frankly. I mean, I can't characterize uh, the level of threat. You know, what we're focused on is being ready, right? A, a le level of military readiness across the whole NATO alliance that would deter aggression.
aggression and ensure peace. So Europe has been free, hold, and peace for over 70 years, uh, and we aim to keep it that way, right? That's, that's what the alliance is about. It's not about provocation. It's not about countering uh, Russians or any other uh, potential threats. It's about ensuring that uh, Europe remains free, whole, and at peace, that we build an alliance that's strong and capable, that we improve interoperability with our NATO allies at the tactical level, and that's what's really special about training in Poland with our Polish allies. We're able to you know, practice interoperability, practice uh, our communication systems, practice things as mundane as being able to transfer fuel between a Polish vehicle and a U.S. vehicle, and that kind of interoperability uh, provides a strength and builds readiness across the alliance. Thanks for your question. So as, as I said earlier, it's about 900 soldiers, a uh, little over 300 vehicles. The vast majority will go to Pogitz, Poland. Uh, a small element will go to Zagan, Poland. Um, of course, we don't permanently station any forces in any uh, Eastern European country. Uh, so these are rotational forces, and they'll move to where the training is, right? So there's an exercise in uh, Romania, Bulgaria, the force will move down there for the exercise, but largely they'll, they'll be in uh, Poditz, Poland. Uh, our Polish allies there have provided us space to create a logistics hub. This is a sustainment unit, a logistics unit, and for the most part of their nine-month deployment, they'll be uh, split between Zagan and uh, Poditz, Poland. So the, uh, this is a sustainment unit or a support unit, so it, it specializes in logistics. Uh, the equipment is all logistics. Uh, there, there are no tanks, no fighting vehicles that were on this ship. Um, approximately 311 trucks, lorries, uh, trailers, fuel tankers, uh, that sort of thing. The units, the capabilities of this unit range from supply uh, resupply of ammunition, resupply of fuel, movements, movements control, and maintenance is primarily the, uh, the mission of this unit, and the equipment reflects that mission. You can see behind us cargo vehicles, fuel tankers, that sort of thing. And, and so for the most part, beside small Humvees and, and command and control vehicles, it's primarily logistics 